Hey Nikitha, I've been thinking a lot about color discrimination lately. It seems to be a pervasive issue, doesn't it? Absolutely, Jacob. It's disheartening to see how people are judged and treated differently based on the color of their skin. It's like society hasn't moved past these archaic biases. True, and it's not just about skin color. It extends to how we perceive and react to different colors in various aspects of life, from fashion to workplace dynamics. That's a valid point. It's not just limited to racial discrimination. There's also this subtle, yet significant, bias towards certain colors in different contexts. Exactly. I mean, look at how certain colors are associated with specific emotions. It's like we've been conditioned to respond to colors in certain ways. That's an interesting observation. Colors do have psychological and emotional connotations, and these associations can inadvertently lead to discrimination. For example, the preference for lighter skin tones in some cultures perpetuates harmful stereotypes and biases. Right, and it's not just about skin color, it's prevalent in many aspects of our lives. Even in the workplace, there's this unspoken preference for certain colors. It's like we've assigned values to colors that go beyond aesthetics. Absolutely, Jacob. The workplace is a prime example of how color discrimination can manifest. Have you noticed how certain colors are deemed more professional than others? It's like there is an unwritten dress code that associates specific colors with competence. Yes, and it's not just in clothing. It extends to the office environment as well. I've read studies that suggest certain colors in the workplace can influence productivity and creativity. It's fascinating how deeply ingrained these biases are. It's a vicious cycle, isn't it? We associate certain colors with success and professionalism, and that influences how people perceive and treat each other in professional settings. And it's not just about the workplace. Think about how marketing and advertising play into color biases. Brands strategically use colors to evoke specific emotions and reactions from consumers. It's almost manipulative. True, but on the flip side, it also reflects societal preferences. The marketing industry is essentially capitalizing on existing color biases to sell products. It's like a feedback loop, society influences marketing, and marketing reinforces societal norms. It's a complex web of influences, for sure. But how do we break this cycle of color discrimination, both in the workplace and in society? I think awareness is the first step. We need to recognize and acknowledge these biases, whether they are based on race or preferences for certain colors. Education plays a crucial role in dismantling these ingrained beliefs. Absolutely. Education and open dialogue can help challenge stereotypes and broaden perspectives. We need to create environments where diversity is celebrated, not just in terms of race, but also in terms of individual expression, including the colors people choose to wear or surround themselves with. And let's not forget the role of media and pop culture in perpetuating these biases. Representation matters. When we see a diverse range of colors and cultures in the media, it helps break down stereotypes and promotes inclusivity. True. It's essential for media to showcase a variety of colors and cultures authentically. This not only reflects the reality of our diverse world, but also helps challenge preconceived notions. I also believe that fostering a culture of empathy and understanding is crucial. People need to be willing to listen and learn from each other's experiences. This applies not only to racial issues, but also to how individuals relate to and appreciate different colors. Empathy is indeed a powerful tool for change. It requires us to step into each other's shoes, or in this case, experience the world through each other's eyes. By understanding the impact of color discrimination, we can work towards dismantling these biases. And it's not just about dismantling, it's about building a more inclusive and accepting society where everyone feels valued regardless of their skin color or the colors they choose to surround themselves with. Agreed. It's a collective effort. Individuals, communities, and institutions all need to work together to create an environment where color discrimination becomes a thing of the past. Changing societal norms is a gradual process, but every conversation, every awareness campaign, and every small act of inclusivity contributes to that change. Well said, Nikita. It's encouraging to think that our collective efforts, no matter how small, can contribute to a more tolerant and accepting world. Absolutely, Jacob. 
Let's keep these conversations going and continue to challenge the status quo. Only then can we hope to see a future where color discrimination is truly a thing of the past. As Jacob and Nikitha continued their conversation, they realized the depth and complexity of color discrimination. It wasn't just about skin color. It was about the biases and preferences associated with various colors in different aspects of life. Through open dialogue, education, and a commitment to change, they hope to contribute to a world where diversity, in all its forms, was celebrated and valued.